So here we're going to talk about the basics of proteins. Now the reason why I don't have a static image here but one that is rotating is three-dimensional shape is very important to the functions of proteins as we'll see here. So it's very important to be able to view this protein from all sides. So proteins are composed of amino acids. So there's different subunits uh, that are linked together that'll ultimately form the protein. So there's 20 common amino acids in the standard genetic code, and they all have different side chains or R groups. This is the variant group. And that determines the properties of the amino acid and how it will interact. Now, an additional two amino acids can be incorporated by special translocation or translation mechanisms. So there's 22 genetically encoded amino acids, but 20 are the common. Looking a little bit more in more detail to this basic components of an amino acid, we have this basic structure here. So there is that R group, which is the variant group, and that's again what makes each amino acid unique. Then there's the amino group, the hydrogen group, and the carboxyl group. So the amino acid gets its name from the amino group, the amino, hydrogen, and carboxyl group. These are common uh, in standard across all amino acids. What makes them different is this R group that provides them with a different structure and also a different function. So if we look at the amino acids uh, here, this is a list of 21 of them, uh, and we could see them kind of organized based on some of their properties uh, here. So what are some of those properties that an amino acid may have? Well, they could have a positive side chain, they could have a negative side chain, they could be um, amino acids with polar uncharged side chains, so you could see those organized here, special cases, and then amino acids with hydrophobic side chains here. And they're each given a name, a three letter kind of code, and then a single letter code. So in eukaryotes, there's only uh, 21 um, amino acids, but 20 of those are the, in the standard genetic code, plus there's um, one other one there, but we're gonna focus really mainly on those 20 there. Humans can only synthesize 12, though, of these amino acids, which means nine are considered essential, and they must be consumed in the diet. Uh, humans cannot manufacture or produce those particular amino acids. They need to be consumed in the diet, and that's why they're considered to be essential. Ones that are included here, I just included the capital letters here. You can go through and find them if you'd, if you'd like, uh, just to get you familiar with some of the coding systems uh, that we use for listing amino acids. Now, within our proteins here, we, amino acids are linked together, as I mentioned before, but they're linked together by peptide bonds. That is the result of dehydration synthesis. So what does this kind of refer to and mean? Well, if you're dehydrated, you're losing water. Well, in this synthesis process, there's actually a water molecule that's released. I don't think by uh, linking these amino acids together, there's gonna be liters and liters of water generated. This is only one little water molecule. Um, so keep in mind it's not a massive amount of water, but we are dehydrating this process and releasing water. So when the bond is formed, there's a release of a water molecule. Now we could see that here, that's happening between our two amino acids here, amino acid one, amino acid two. You could also see the same thing in the image over here. This peptide bond to form, OH plus H is H2O, two hydrogens and an oxygen. And we see the same thing here, kind of highlighted here, where we have our two hydrogens and our oxygen forming that water molecule. When that's removed, then these are linking together here, forming this peptide bond between that carbon and nitrogen atom. Now, dehydration synthesis versus hydrolysis, if you remember from one of the other lectures, or you will be seeing hopefully in the other lectures, something called hydrolysis. So dehydration synthesis, they just talked about, removing water to link molecules together. So here we have a bunch of molecules, we're removing a water molecule, we're linking them together. Hydrolysis is the opposite. You can think of break it apart as hydrolysis. Water and lysis means to cut or to break adding water to break bonds. So here we have a bunch of bonds. Here we have water coming in, breaking that apart and getting now into our individual kind of molecules or uh, amino acids in this case here. Enzymes are responsible for this breakdown and construction process. More on that later and other videos that you can check out if you are interested. 
Lastly, uh, proteins would be called uh, polypeptides. What's a polypeptide? Well, it's a long chain of amino acids. We kind of see them here represented by their three-letter code. We have kind of one, two, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, all the way down here to 129. You just see how they're linked together. And when we have these long polypeptide chains, sometimes those one-letter codes are advantageous to make it easier to kind of read and go through the polypeptide. So poly, meaning many, peptide, referring to the bonds. Many of those bonds linked together, many of those amino acids linked together by those peptide bonds, makes a protein.